The color correction system in Left 4 Dead 2 is different from any other Source Engine game. Unlike the other games, we need at least one fog volume brush entity with assigned color correction entity to have any color correction work at all. The fog volume is usually used for indoor color correction. Let's start by adding a color correction entity. Set the fall off and distance to minus 1. Any other value will break the color correction entity in Left 4 Dead 2. Pick a lookup file name. This will be the color correction file. Full file path and extension name is required. In my case, materials, correction, test sugarcane outside.raw. Go to flags and set master. This will be the master color correction which is always used unless you enter a fog volume. You can add a secondary color correction entity for indoor color correction or any location, like a room with poisonous gas or radiation. Give it a sensical name and pick the lookup file name. Make sure the master flag is not enabled in this entity. Then create a fog volume brush entity using the fog volume tool texture. The trigger texture also works. In the color correction name field, pick the secondary color correction entity. Entering the fog volume will swap the color correction from the master to the one you assigned until you leave the fog volume again. You may use multiple color corrections and fog volumes in your map, but only one color correction can be active at a time. After setting up the entities, compile the map with the final compile mode to get the best lighting. Now that we have assigned color correction to the map, we have to actually create the color correction. There are two ways to get that done, in Left 4 Dead 2 and in Photoshop. First we will do it in Left 4 Dead 2 directly. Load the game in Tools mode. This can be done by using the Authoring Tools which has a Tools mode button. Press F10 to take control of the game and sometimes F11 to swap to full screen mode. Load the map. Walk to a spot where you want to use color correction. Open the console and enter color correction UI. Click new and select one of the options available. Those tools are pretty much the same as in Photoshop. If you are new to all this, just take a while to play with the settings and understand what they do. It is usual that the strength of the saved color correction will be way stronger than what you see on your screen right now. You can remedy this by modifying the max weight value in Hammer or saving your color correction in a weaker state. Once you are happy with what you have created, save the color correction. Save this in Materials Correction with your map name and possible use or location of the map. In my case, test sugarcane outside. Now for the second approach, we'll use Photoshop. Since you are still in the map, go to a different spot where you want to use a different color correction. Bring up the color correction UI again and make sure that no color correction is enabled. And then take a screenshot. You may now close the game. Open the folder where you just saved the color correction file. Delete the VCC and PWL.raw file. Those are not useful for us. Now for Photoshop. Open the screenshot you made. Load the original off color correction file, which can be found in materials correction off.raw. This is the lookup table for the original uncorrected colors. It will open a new window before importing. For width, use 32 pixels. For height, 
1024 pixels, 3 channels, interleaved, 8 bits and 0 header size. Copy the lookup table into your screenshot. Apply color corrections to your screenshot until you get the result you like. Make sure that all color correction layers are above your lookup table layer so that it gets affected as well. Hide the screenshot layer. Merge all layers into one. This will save the correction onto your lookup table, which you now can copy back to the raw file you took it from. Then again, save the file in materials, correction, with a new name. In my case, test sugarcane inside. Now you can load your map and admire your color correction. Have fun!